I have here one of the most expensive pre-season tents on the market. The Z-Pax Ultiplex costs $600. And today I wanna to go over what's good about it, what's bad about it, to see whether it's worth spending that much money on a tent. And spoiler alert, it kind of depends. One of the things that makes the Altplex stand out compared to other tents and why you're paying such a big price tag is the weight. On my scale, the Altplex weighs 446 grams, so that's super lightweight. That doesn't include any stakes or poles that are needed to set the tent up, but even then, very lightweight tent. We're gonna get it set up and see how it's achieving that weight while also still being a functional tent. The tent is fairly easy to set up. It is a trekking pole tent, so you need to use one trekking pole for the Altplex in order to provide the structural support for the tent. And some people are a little bit hesitant to go with the trekking pole tent because they think it's harder to set up. But after some practice, and I've had a lot of practice with trekking pole tents, I actually find them easier than traditional tents that use tent poles. Another way that the Ultiplex differs from a traditional tent is that it's single walled. While a lot of traditional tents will have a mesh wall on the inside of the tent to provide a physical barrier between you and the outer material of the tent, the Ultiplex just has one layer of material that protects you from the outside of the tent. And that's one of the reasons why it's so lightweight. It doesn't have that extra mesh on the inside. So while one of the negatives that people say about single wall tents is that you don't have that physical barrier between you and the outside. So if you do have condensation buildup on the fly of your tent, you could touch that with your sleeping bag or your head while you're laying down in the tent. I find that with the Ultiplex, there's enough room inside of this tent. It's a very big tent for a one person tent that I'm never touching the outer walls. And then what's nice about the single wall nature of the tent is that if I do have condensation buildup, then I can wipe that down very easily. It's a lot harder to use a cloth to wipe down the condensation and then squeeze that moisture outside of the tent with a double wall tent because you do have that mesh barrier. There's a lot of good features with the Altplex as well. You have two doors, so we have one door that's open right now. And then if you want to, you can open up the second door in order to get a ton of ventilation. And the tie backs with the Altplex for the doors are really nice and well put together. It makes it really easy to tie the doors back. And then for this mesh screen that protects you from the bugs, it's just a big double zipper rainbow door. So you can just open that fully and tuck that down. And then when looking at the features on the inside of the tent, you do have a little pocket right there that you can store things in on the, the front side of the tent. And then in order to help with condensation and air movement inside the tent, there's a mesh perimeter connecting the bathtub floor to the outer wall of the tent that provides pretty good airflow. And then something that's really cool and I've never seen with another tent before is that attached to the bathtub floor around the perimeter, there's these bungees that you can tighten up in order to pull the bathtub floor up and then per help prevent wind from coming into the tent quite as much, or if, you're, if it's raining really hard, you're not gonna get as much splash back, or if you're using a tent in the winter, snow drifts are gonna be protected from coming into the tent a little bit more with that really cool feature. There's also a little hook at the top of the tent here if you do need to hang something inside of there. Like I said, the size of the Altiplex is a big benefit for it. It's advertised as being 36 inches wide, if you have a perfect pitch, that may be the case. I just used a tape measure and measured it, and I have 34 inches of space on the inside of the tent. And then the inside length of the tent is advertised at seven and a half feet. I measured it at just over seven feet. But what really makes the Altiplex stand apart from a lot of other tents is the height that you get. So you need to use a taller than average trekking pole. I have here the Cascade Mountain Tech carbon fiber trekking poles. If you go about a half to one inch above the stop points, then you can get enough height out of that trekking pole, which is really good. Otherwise, you're gonna need something like this carbon strut that Z-Pack sells in order to prop up your trekking pole. But because of that extra height that the Ultiplex has compared to a lot of other single wall trekking pole tents, the outer walls are steeper, and with that steepness, you get more room at the head and foot end and in the middle of the tent. So you can see here, if I'm sitting up in the middle of the tent, I still have a lot of space above my head. And then even if I'm just off to the side a little bit, I can move over about a foot to the side and still have headroom. If I swing into the tent here, we can take a look at how much room I have at the foot and head end of the tent. With a Z-Pax Altplex sleeping pad, which is two and a half inches tall, and then a 20 degree and light and equipment quilt. There's a lot of room at the foot end here that you can see. I could easily have a much loftier sleeping bag, taller sleeping pad, or just be all around longer and I'm gonna have a lot of space there. And then you can see without moving, I have a lot of room at my head as well. I'm wearing a hat right now and still have several inches above my head. And I am using a pillow, the Trekology 2.0. Z-Pax advertises that someone up to seven and a half feet can use this tent. 
but I think that's without a sleeping pad or a quilt. If you are using a quilt or a sleeping bag, you're probably good up to like six and a half feet. I think there's a lot of room at the foot and head end of this tent if you pitch it properly. Another big benefit of the Ultiplex, and this is why it's so lightweight, is the material that it's made of. It's made with Dyneema composite fabric or DCF, and you can get it in two different versions, either 0.55 ounce or 0.75 ounce. The 0.75 ounce DCF is gonna have more tensile and puncture strength to it, but I found with the 0.55, it's really durable still, and you're gonna be good enough with that, and it's gonna be less weight as well. The big benefit with Dyneema is how it deals with water and moisture. Dyneema does not absorb any water moisture compared to some other fabrics that are used with tents like nylon or polyester. So if it is raining out, it's really easy to just wipe that rain off or even shake it and then not have a lot of water weight that you're gonna be carrying once you're out on the trail. And then if you do have condensation buildup on the inside of the tent, you can easily wipe that down and then squeeze out your cloth or whatever you're using to do that outside of the tent. And because of that, it's really, really good to use Dyneema tents in really rainy or humid environments. But there are some negatives with Dyneema and we're gonna get into that as we transition over to talking about the bad things about the Altiplex. The first obvious bad thing about the Altiplex is the price. It costs $625 for the 0.55 ounce Dyneema version or $675 for the 0.75 ounce Dyneema version. The other negative with this tent is the space. It is a one person tent for some people. That's gonna be way too too small, you're gonna want a two person tent. But if you do like saving weight, then the one person tent is the way to go. If you just need a tent to sleep in, a one person tent's gonna do that fine. But if you are hanging out in the tent for long periods of time because it's raining or it's winter time, then a one person tent is gonna kinda suck. Another bad thing is that it does take a longer trekking pole for a lot of people out there. Your trekking pole is not gonna be long enough. I measured from the ground to the top here and it's 56 inches long. So if you can't get 56 inches of length out of your trekking pole, and keep in mind that if you are in very soft ground, then you are gonna be losing some of the height of the trekking pole as the tip buries into the ground, then you're gonna to need to use that carbon fiber pole jack. With setup, the tent also takes a lot of stakes. I use eight stakes to set the tent up. And if you wanna see a video in how I set the Ultiplex up in order to maximize space and ease of use, then go check out a video post in the video description where I go over my setup technique. But eight, eight is a lot of tent pegs to use to set up a tent. And you can use up to 10 if you use all of the guy out points. Another negative is the pack size. Dyneema just does not pack as small as other materials, but because it is a lightweight single wall tent, it still packs down fairly small. So is the Altiplex worth all that money? And if you want the most ultralight tent you can get while still having a fairly good amount of room for a one person tent, then the Altiplex is the way to go. You also get all those benefits of Dyneema composite fabric, but the price isn't for everyone. And if you wanna check out a video where I go over an alternative to the Altiplex that's much more budget friendly, as well as a whole bunch of other budget alternatives to my expensive gear, then go check out a video that I'll post right up in the corner there. There's a lot of really cool options in that video. 